My dear P6 learners, welcome to this online program. My name is Mr. Mugisha Emmanuel. In our previous lesson, I left you with an activity about uh, inverse proportions, and I hope you sat down and did this activity so well. So I'm going to go through a few numbers, number one, number three, and number six. Number one says, three ladies can weed a garden in six days. How long will nine ladies take to weed the same garden? So in this case, we are looking for the time. So we shall have ladies. Then on this time, on this side, we shall have time, which we are looking for. Okay? So three ladies, three ladies, take how many days? They take six days to wait this garden. But what about when it is one lady? So one lady takes. Since we have one lady, we will take more time, that is three times six days. What about when we have nine ladies? So nine ladies will take the product, which is 18, then you divide it by nine days. So divide by nine, once divided by nine is two. So it means when they are nine, they are going to take two days. I hope you got that answer. So let's go through number three. Six people can dig a garden in eight hours. Find a period it will take 12 learners to dig the same garden. So we are looking for the time. We are looking for the time. So we shall have this side, pupils, and this side we shall have the time, okay? So we are saying six pupils take eight hours take eight hours to dig this garden. What about when you have one people? So one people will take or takes. Since it is now one person, the workload will have to increase. That is six times eight hours. What about if we increase now to 12? 12 people. So 12 people will take the product, or we can have 6 times 8, then we divide by 12, then hours. So when we reduce by 6, 1, by 6, we are getting a 2, then by 2 is 1, by 2 is 4. So it means when they are 12, they are going to take 4 hours. Then let's go through the last number. The last number says, four workers can repair a road in 30 days. How long will 12 workers take to repair the same road? Number six. So what are we looking for in this case? We are looking for time, so we shall have workers. Then this, we shall have time. So when there are four workers, they will take they will take 30 days to repair this road. What about if we have one worker? This one worker will have to take more time, that is 4 times 30 days. What about if I increase to 12 workers? So 12 workers will take will take will take the product or 4 
4 times 30, then we divide by 12 days. So by 4 we are getting 1, by 4 we are getting 3, by 3 we are getting 1, by 3 we are getting 10. So when there are 12 workers, we are going to have it done in 10 days. I hope you also passed that one. So my dear learners, today we are going to look at another interesting lesson and this lesson is about percentages. This lesson is about percentages. What are percentages? Percentages in simple terms means any fraction out of 100. That's why I'm saying percentage means out of a hundred. In your examination, we have been awarding you using percentages. For example, we have been giving you 70%. Okay? So, if I write 70% on your paper, it means you have scored 70 out of 100. That's why we say 70, I mean Percent means out of 100. So if I write 20%, it means out of 100 you have scored 20. So it becomes 20 out of 100. So we have a symbol which we use in a percentage, and this symbol is sometimes wrongly written by learners. The symbol we use to mean percentage is here. Okay? How do we write this symbol? You write a zero this side, then a slanting stick, then another zero this side. Okay? A zero on the right upper side, then a zero on the lower side. So this one is read as percent. So if I write this one, it is read as 70%. If I write this one, it means 20%. Now, how do we get these percentages? We have been putting them on your papers, but how do teachers get them? That's what I'm going to teach you today. So we are going to learn how to express how to express Fractions as percentages. We are going to learn how to express fractions as a percentage. You can think of any fraction. Remember, we have very many types of fractions. We have unitary fractions. We have proper fractions. We have mixed fractions. We have decimal fractions. We have different kinds of fractions. And we have also ratios. So you can be told to express such in percentage. So in our example number one, we are expressing A half as a percentage. We are expressing a half as a percentage. So if I have given you a half and I want you to express this one as a percentage, you are going to get a half. And I have told you a percentage means out of 100. Then you multiply that fraction by 100%. You are going to get a half. Then you multiply it by 100%. So what does this one give us? We can reduce. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2, we are getting 5. 0 divided by 2, we are getting a 0. Therefore, we shall have 1 times 50, and the unit here is percent. And this one is going to give us 50%. That 
That means that a half is equivalent to 50%. Let's look at another example. Let's look at another example. Let's look at another example. Number two, change. Three fifths into a percentage. Change three fifths are into a percentage. So how do we change three fifths into a percentage? So three fifths is equal to three fifths and change this one into a percentage we shall multiply by a hundred percent. Okay? Then we reduce. Five divided by five is one. Ten divided by five it is a two. And a zero divided by five, that is a zero. So we shall have 30 times this 20. But the unit here is percent. And what is this one going to give you? What is this one going to give you? Sorry, this one is a three. Three times 20 percent. So when we multiply, what do we get? We are going to get 60 percent. Okay? Yes. Can we have another example? Let's have another example. Number three. What about if I tell you to change? And what are we changing? We are changing nine out of ten into a percentage. We are changing 9 out of 10 into a percentage. So 9 out of 10 is going to give us 9 out of 10, then you multiply by 100%. Okay? So in this case where we are reducing numbers, with the zeros, you just cancel this and this. It means I have remained with 9 out of 1. And any number divided by 1 is that number. So 9 divided by 1, we get 9. Then times 10 percent. And this one is going to give you 90 percent. This one is going to give us 90 percent. So, having done these three examples, sometimes you can be given fractions whereby the denominator of that fraction cannot directly divide the 100%. So, in that case, what do you do? This one will push, it, will push us to example number four. So, assuming I want you to express... And you are expressing a third as a percentage. You are expressing a third as a percentage. So I have told you that you get the fraction given. Then you multiply it by a hundred percent. Okay? But when I look at 100, it's not a multiple of 3. So in this case, what do we do? Do we forcefully cancel? No. When you cancel it at this stage, you are going to get your answer wrongly. So what do we do? First multiply. This one means 1 times 100. So 1 times 100 is going to give us 100%, then out of... Three. Which type of fraction have I got? This one is an improper fraction. And as we have always told you, it's not right for you to leave your answer in improper fractions. So we can reduce. Divide by three, one. 
10 divided by 3, we are getting 3, but there is a remainder of 1. Put that 1 here to make it 10. 10 divided by 3, we are getting 3. There is also a remainder, so that remainder, you put it here. Therefore, this one is going to give us 33, but we have a remainder 1. That remainder 1 is here, which is supposed to be divided by the denominator, which is 3. Then don't forget your symbol of percentage. Okay? So a third will give us 33 and a third percentage. Let's have one last example. Let's have one last example about fractions which are not directly dividing the 100. So in our next example, we are going to have 1 out of 8, which we are going to express as a percentage. Okay? Yes, we are going to express and what are we expressing? One out of eight. Express one out of eight as a percentage. One out of eight as a percentage. So one out of eight will give us one out of eight. Then we multiply by 100%. Okay? 100 is not directly divisible by eight. It means when you divide it by eight, you are going to get some remainders. So what do we do to avoid making mistakes? We first multiply. 1 times 100 percent, then everything out of 8. This one will give us 100 divided by 8. Which number can reduce 100 at the same time? 8. Okay, my friend is telling me 2. We have other numbers which we can use to reduce. We have also 4, but let's use 2. 8 divided by 2, we shall get 4. And 100 divided by 2, we shall get 50. So it means we have got 50 divided by now 4. Don't forget the symbol for percentage. Do we have a common factor for 50 and 4? Yes. And that is 2. 4 divided by 2, we are getting a 2. 50 divided by 2, we are getting 25. So the new fraction is 25 out of 2%. Okay? So we can now reduce by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. No remainder. 5 divided by 2, we are getting 2. But the remainder here is 1. Therefore, we shall have the whole number as 12. The remainder, 1, out of the denominator, which is 2. And the symbol remains percent. So, at your home there, you can get textbooks and change very many fractions into percentages. I have showed you in example 1, example 2, example 3, and I have also showed you cases where the denominator cannot directly divide the 100%. And I have told you in that case, you are supposed to first of all get the product, then after getting the product, you divide it by the denominator once. Thank you so much for being good learners. I'm going to give you an activity. Please do it with a smile. Bye-bye.